What's up guys? Nick the Nutter Buster. Time for gear and beer. Sorry if I seem a little subdued. I've been uh, hunting a lot and getting ready to go on another hunt. Been running around trying to get some errands run, but I did get pretty cool packages in today. So I ordered a Latitude classic I think is what this is and after talking with Kevin over at Latitude we'd had some conversations earlier um, he was talking about sending me a saddle and when I ordered the classic um, he said tell you what I was going to send you a saddle back a, once upon a time and I never did so I feel bad he said so let me send you the method so I have two Latitude saddles we're going to be talking about both of them we're going to be doing the unboxing videos on each one of them because um, people complain about the unboxing videos. Some of you don't like them, but some of you watch them. They always get watched, and I really had to say, I really think Latitude outdid themselves with their packaging. So they talk about how it's lightweight. With the Classic, you can save weight. Single paddle saddle, single panel saddle coming in at only 20 ounces. It has the trademark vertical support skeleton. You can sit all day with added support to preserve the integrity of your saddle's shape. It has removable leg straps. I'm actually really excited about that. Um, enhance the flexibility of your saddle system with removable leg straps. I always cut leg straps on saddles because I blow them. And like this bad boy right here, I knew I was going to resell it after I sat in it once. So I, uh, I ended up taping them up. We're going to do the part two follow up on this too, but. I want to do something fun tonight, and that's not going to be as fun. Um, what else do you have? Lineman's loops. Streamlined climbing with low profile, easy to access lineman belt loops. Adjustable bridge. Experience enhanced comfort and adjustability with the dual adjustable off-lux bridge. And it has premium mesh. Let's check it out. That's all the marketing pitch. Let's check it out. Oh, wow, it is light. <laughs> Actually, um, it's a smaller saddle than a size 2 kite. I do like the green. Catering to us southern boys. Oh, giving us some green. That's your leg loops. And you can see they all go on with them G hooks with them clips. So, this is the part. Yeah, that's actually really simple, really light. Everybody should do this. Everybody do this on your saddles. And then everybody do these lineman belt loops. Please and thank you. Nutter Buster has spoken. Um, yeah. Yeah, the stitching looks good. I'll try to set it, show it to y'all. So it doesn't have uh, micro adjusters on it, which is interesting. See how that goes. I've always been kind of a fan of the micro adjusters, but um, I do like these lineman's loops. They're plenty big, easy to clip into. I like that. Um, the Oplux bridge, I am probably going to be removing that to use my system because I don't really know that I want an adjustable bridge. I kind of have it dialed in. Um, and they do use the Dyneema, which I'm still talked about that in the phantom video i'm very much on the fence on the whole dyneema thing i think it's weird that nobody in the climbing industry really uses it but saddles do um, this one actually this is about the only one i've seen that has the manufacturer's date so this one got made on 10 21 2020 so i guess that's cool um we got a big sticker but we don't seem to have any safety precautions or anything like that unless I lost them but I'm imagining that they probably are doing the thing where you're only supposed to use them so long and then you need to replace them which is good um, they've gone the same route as tethered and done the one inch strap on the waist belt and it looks like they're actually using the good old Austria Alpine oh yeah I like that better than the phantom one um, and it does look like they use the no so up oh, no that's a is that okay yeah that's fine so it's reversible this is a teeny tiny little thing but i actually i like instead of using this hand to pinch the buckle i like to use this hand 
but that's really nitpicking. You can change that in 30 seconds. And in fact, I may try, I'll say you can change it in 30 seconds. Then you try to do it on video and it can't be changed, right? But I think, yeah, we're not gonna do that on video. It's gonna be kind of time consuming, but let's see how she ride. Let's see how she ride. Let's see if they got my waist sizing right. Oh. So it's definitely, that don't really come in a whole lot. So maybe made for somebody with a little bit less junk in the trunk. Um, this compared to, this is a recon sling, which has been so far the winner winner chicken dinner for comfortable saddles for me. You can see that comes in a lot further than that does. And then, I don't have my kite. My kite practically comes in like almost touches at your groin. But if we have a phantom, put that on over it just so y'all can kind of see how they compare. If I can get them buckles to work right. Um, yeah, the phantom comes in a lot further so that's a very very short as far as on your width it's not a very wide saddle um, depth you can see that's your phantom all right if I hold it kind of up to my Bigfoot logo there see where it hangs down I really wish I had dug the kite out to do a side-by-side -side comparison you can see here, if we hang it right there. So it is deeper on the up and down. But overall, that's a very small, very light, very simple saddle. Um, I didn't catch that they had sizing. Maybe my fault for not having ordered the right size, but that does seem like a short saddle. Um, and I do think it's interesting. I think maybe girth hitching these Persic knots up and down the bridge is their solution to the adjusters. Um, kind of similar, I think, maybe girth hitching that and being able to slide it up and down. It's kind of like the comfort channels where you can go up and down or like on the kite and the Kestrel where you have the pull straps on the bottom. Um, but I like it. I mean, the seems to be well made. I really give them props for this. Curious to see how hard that is to clip in. Uh, yeah, it's not bad at all. Mm. Yeah, I could, I could do that. I think I like, I like that better for here. But then I think, yeah, it clips in here. So I think. That's not bad. Clipping them on is not a problem at all. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can actually wear leg loose. Let's see if I know what I'm doing. Hey. Yeah, I like that Austria Alpine buckle. So if we go here, where are they at? Where are the loops? They're kind of far back. But that's clipped in. And you'd actually. See, I clipped that wrong, I reckon. I think you would want that to clip through your linemans. A lot easier to clip it than to unclip it. It's a little fiddly. If that mesh was, if that loop was stiffer, that'd be a little bit better, but not bad. It goes on real easy. Just getting it off is a little bit of a pain, but you can also completely take it off, so. I'm not going to complain about that. That's the first saddle I've seen with that feature. And I think it's a smart one. Yeah. That's going to be what your leg loops do. And they seem to adjust fine. Yeah. And they're a little tight, but on the adjustment on the slider. But they're not bad. Not bad. 
If I was a leg loop kind of guy, I could live with that. I could live with that. Digging the lineman's loops, digging that, that location, not sure about that. That's just, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna try to hunt with this some this weekend. But I'm not sure. Feels like if they'd have made it maybe, I don't know, six inches longer side to side. That might have been perfect for, for me. Everybody's different. If I tried this saddle on last year, pre-COVID, might be a little better. And it may be fine when you get up in the tree. You never, you never really know until you're about four or five hours into a sit. But yeah, those are kind of a little more fiddly than a regular G-hook, but it addresses the problem that we've seen, like if you've seen that video of the Eberhardt Signature Saddle. Uh, you've seen where they get hooked up and they come loose. And yes, you know, Mr. Eberhardt's only two foot off the ground, but that same thing could happen just as easy 30 foot off the ground. And with that little wire keeper, I think if you're going to use G-hooks, I think a keeper makes a lot of sense. Um, but it does. It's a little bit of aggravation. I think I think I love it for this back connection where it's like, you know, hey, do I want to use them? Do I not want to use them? You know, if you're doing rope climbing or one sticking or something where you need the leg loops, you got them, you can put them on. But then as far as if you're going to keep them on and you're going to be fastening them and unfastening them as you climb, I think it'd be better if you had a female end of a buckle up here or something. Maybe had it where you could thread it off. I like that thought though, with it being modular. I like the colors, I like the presentation in the box. Um, overall, I like it. They went with kind of a softer um, two inch webbing, similar to what they use on the Recon, compared to like what Arrow Hunter uses. And that mesh is stiffer. Maybe it won't stretch as bad as some of the other mesh I've seen. May just be, because this is new it feels stiffer, but I do, I do like some green to it. Down here we have a lot of green all through the year, so that's kind of nice. I like that multi-cam. But yeah, that's it. That is the Latitude Classic, and you can see there, you can see we've got that vertical strap and that vertical strap, and those are thick. That's like a heavy-duty, like reminiscent of like trophy line type webbing. That's going to add a lot of structure to the back side of that saddle. That's gonna be nice, I think. I think that's gonna cut. I think, I think that's gonna cut down on that stretching. I think them two vertical panels are gonna carry a lot of your load. Um, so just first impressions. I like the idea of the webbing. You won't know till you sit in it. I love the uh, spring G hooks. It, or at least I, I like the idea of modular lineman's loops and or modular leg loops and I like the lineman's belt. The Oplux bridge, I like Oplux. Um, like I said, kind of iffy on the whole uh, Persic made out of am steel thing, but it seems to lock up fine. It's got plenty of turns in it, so we'll see. Maybe my favorite thing since sliced bread, may not be. Um, I may hunt with it once and then I may go back. I just like being able to clip in and clip out with my carabiners, but that is interesting. More and more people seem to be going with that, the adjustable bridge. And I think it's because you got more new people getting in. And when you're new, I think it's more important to have an adjustable bridge. You know, you're figuring out how long you want it. I think once you get some more time in the saddle, most people that I've seen, they kind of dial something in. Um, and then they don't need it as much. The exception is guys who rope climb in one stick and stuff, and then it's nice for them to be able to shorten their bridge to get it out of the way, but it's really, really light. I was really surprised at that. It's, it feels lighter in the hand. It's definitely lighter than I found them. I don't have a scale, but that's lighter than the Phantom. Um, and it's deeper up and down. We'll just see. I may wish it was a little bit longer that they made a, a size large or something like that, but I'm looking forward to hunting out of that.
So uh, thanks for watching. We're going to be doing some more videos on the method and uh, recon sling mods and talking about some other different stuff in the future. So y'all stay tuned.